I am John Barry Hill, uh, the landscape curator for the Smith College Botanic Garden, and I'm here in the Mount Rogers National Recreation Area on a forested hillside, which are in abundance down here with Professor Je Jesse Bellamere from the Smith College Biology Department. And we're looking into a really understudied species around here, the uh, mountain magnolia, Magnolia fraseri. It occurs as a canopy and subcanopy tree. And what drew us down here is that it's kind of missing from both botanical collections and from the scientific literature. And because it, op it occupies historically a band of elevation on mountainsides like those around here, between about 2,000 and about 4,200 feet, we suspect that it might be succumbing to the same climate change pressures that have been observed in Europe, in Vermont, in Japan, in Taiwan, in South and Central America, where warmer, drier climate is forcing these montane and alpine species upslope, uh, where we're seeing with these long-lived uh, species, the new recruitment, the new reestablishment, the new seedlings are occurring more predominantly at higher elevations as opposed to lower elevations, suggesting that the species are climbing the mountains in response to that climate change pressure. It's a tricky thing to try and figure out in a week, that's all we have down here, but the way we've gone about doing that is setting up these 5,000 square meter plots, that's about the size of a soccer field, and we're examining how trees like this one behind me, this is a canopy tree with some sprouts coming up, this is mountain magnolia right here, and you can see the thicker, maybe 15 inch caliper stem behind me, that one goes all the way up, it's dropping fruits around here, and then we're seeing little seedlings, they're a little tricky to find out, we got to be really vigilant, but um, this is um, mama's leaf right there, and, and, and here's the baby seedling right there. Uh, these are a little hard to, to find. Our eyes have been sharpened on this mission for sure, because this is a bit of, a, of an Easter egg hunt, trying to find these amidst all the, the visual noise and other recruitment that's happening down here. But uh, <clears throat> We take an inventory of the, four, the canopy trees, the subcanopy trees, and the seedlings. We try to age them. We can age them, the mature trees, with uh, core samples, looking at tree rings. And these saplings, when we look at them, we can see the scars where each year's terminal growth, this new bud as it opens up with a new whirl of leaves, a little, little bud scar. You can see that on saplings. You can see it on the end of twigs. And it gives you a sense of how old the sapling is and how well it's been growing each year by the the interval between those bud scars. What we've been seeing in the past week is that sites like this, which is at about 2,800 feet and below, the ratio of older trees to seedlings is very high. We're often seeing a dozen or more mature trees like we're seeing here. We've probably counted 20 or more already and we're only halfway through the plot. Um, but this is the third seedling we found. Uh, so the ratio really favors the mature canopy trees as opposed to yesterday when we were up at our highest site where we only saw one mature tree suggesting that historically it struggled to establish itself that high. However, we saw 30 seedlings, so it was a 30 to 1 ratio of uh, seedlings to mature trees suggesting that this tree is establishing itself much more successfully at a much higher band of its historic range, uh, of its elevation range, and really struggling to, re to establish itself in the lower range. That is the, the picture we were trying to detect with these surveys of the species climbing the mountain, presumably in response to climate change. One thing those core samples are going to give us, in addition to aging the, the trees, is a little picture of what the localized climate has meant for growing conditions. You can't tell just by looking at one trees because certain things that have nothing to do with weather like light exposure have a big effect on growth rates. However, if we average them all together down below versus all the mature trees up top, we might get a signal that indicates how the tree is responding to a changing climate and compare that to National Weather Service data for the site as well. But uh, what really drew us to, to Magnolia is that the Botanic Garden's been linked up with the Global Conservation Consortium for Magnolia. This species cannot be seed banked because its seeds are what are called recalcitrant. They don't tolerate the dehydration and freezing process that's needed for seed banking, so they have to be kept in living collections. And Smith, at places like McLeish Field Station, 
are ideal places to hold these conservation collections and to plug them into a, a network of botanic gardens and arboreta around the world that are doing the same thing for magnolia and for oak and maple and rhododendron and other seed other species that can't be seed banked and have a lot of small range endemics that are vulnerable to climate change and vulnerable to extinction from habitat destruction. So we're proud to be part of that effort. We're hoping this information will help that global effort. If you're interested in learning more about that, I really encourage you to look into and research the global strategy for plant conservation, the North American Botanic Garden strategy for plant conservation, and Botanic Garden Conservation International's Global Conservation Consortia. That is the, um, the framework that we're, we're uh, working within and that we're part it, it's giving us our network of partners to collaborate with.